Well, good morning, everybody, from small town Canada. We're lost. Actually, I'm not quite lost, but uh, I'm lost on a way of how to get to Smithville from the QEW. I had to go all the way around here to find a truck route. Karen was trying to take me down a non-truck route residential road. Thanks, Karen. So now I had to come all the way back over in Lincoln, Ontario. I'm headed south down uh, the 18. She wants me to turn right here. We're in Beamsville now. Okay, another small town. And uh, she wants me to turn right here. I don't know if I want to. <laughs> Not right here, but up ahead. We're trying to figure out how to get down to Smithville because uh, that's where we need to pick up our load. But there's no good truck routes connecting the QEW down to Smithville. QEW stands for Queen Elizabeth Way. It's a, it's a freeway that runs from uh, Niagara around through Hamilton to Toronto. And I need to get a few miles south of that. And I'm not from here, so I don't know. So we're just gonna keep going. All right there, Ford. All right, yep. Karen, you're trying to get me go, to go down a residential street again, Karen. Losing faith in you. Remember what happened to Mandy? Threw her out the window. Whoop. Okay, we'll just stop here, how about that? Okay, red means stop. I can definitely tell that Mandy's Pardon me. <clears throat> Let's try again. I can definitely tell that Karen's programmers were American. They work. It works great in America. As soon as you get into Canada, it's not all there, you know. And I left a few screws at home. Green means go. All right. Of course, we got to go through this little downtown. So we we're talking about small town America the other day. Was that yesterday? And here is small town Canada. Very similar, right? Very similar. Okay, we're gonna turn right here. Oh dear, that little scooter's in my way. Uh oh. Oh, he's backing up. Okay. <laughs> he's backing up. Thanks. Thanks, bud. Thank you. So down this road to Highway 72, okay. Oh wow, that's an old church there, First Baptist Church. So this part of the country was uh, the first part of the country to be settled, right? So a lot of old, old architecture here. This, this part of the country is much older than Manitoba. My family was uh, part of the settlers that went out and began settling Western Canada and they arrived there. Uh, well, mom's family arrived on the shores of the Red River on eight, in 1874. Dad's family, I believe, was here a little earlier than that, uh, possibly the 1700s. And there's not as quite of an accurate record on that side just because uh, on my mom's side, we have the diary of, uh, what was it, my great, 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 great ancestor or whatever who came over. And uh, yeah, at the time, you know, uh, America was trying to uh, push north further. They were settling into uh, North Dakota, Montana, and they wanted to claim and move further north. And uh, there was the uh, CN Railroad that was being built across east to west. Oh, there's a lot of stuff going on out west back then. But this area here, is a lot older than Manitoba. So it's it's pretty cool going through these neighborhoods because the architecture here, and the streets are a lot narrower because you know they only had horse and buggy pretty much. They didn't have cars when they built these towns. I mean, I guess they didn't have cars when they built our towns either out west, but since there was a lot more room, a lot more spacious, uh, they built the towns a little, uh, you know, buildings a little more further apart and stuff. Well, I'm gonna give you an exclusive look at my load before I tarp it you guys will be the only ones to see it aside from me and the guys who loaded it here and I know you're gonna go uh what a barrel yeah a barrel 
and this just these rail lines are like little tiny railway lines that's easy that's fine i have to tarp that that's the hardest part because it's so small whatever i'll figure it out I'll bear it. just a whole bunch of random steel parts in a barrel so i'm gonna say this to you guys who are shipping freight um round things roll Square things don't. If you got a bunch of little parts, you should put it in a crate, not in a barrel. And look at this, look at all this contraption that I had to work up here. Got two over the top, that's just to hold it down, right? And then I've belly wrapped it twice. So that's coming around on this side and that side, and also that side over there to that side. So I've got it getting sucked in there, right? And I've also got it getting sucked in there and that sort of gives it a big bear hug you know so it's not gonna move anywhere and then those two on top crisscrossed they hold it down so it's not gonna move it's gonna stay down but I had to use one two three four five six ratchets on this and four straps had it been in a crate properly two straps and we would have been done and two straps and two ratchets so uh it is what it is right i mean look at that. it's not going anywhere right but crates much better square edges squares don't roll round things roll you don't want anything to roll on the trailer so i'm going to tie all these down here and this is the whole load it's going all the way to manitoba Paying a pretty fancy penny too. So it's gonna be good, about 6,000 pounds. I'm gonna deliver this Monday. And uh, the, the hardest part's gonna be tarping it. Cause my tarps have really long ends. So I gotta roll them up, fold them up underneath. It won't be too bad. But uh, yeah, we gotta tarp this whole thing down now. I should say that's gonna take the most time. So we've got two days drive ahead of us and we got three days to get there. Well, two and a half by the time we get out of here. Let's rock and roll. Well, got it done with two tarps. It just barely fit, but we made it work. So the other tarp goes to about like here. So I've got just a couple of inches overlap and a lot of bungees making sure that they don't come undone. Cause you don't want the air to uh, come up you don't want this to be pulled forward and this back one to come on top because then the air will suck this up and turn this into a big balloon back here right west street highway 20. all right see if we can get out of smithville i'm taking a different way out of town a more truck friendly way now that i know that i took the wrong way before we go down highway 20 towards uh south of hamilton this is it right here. Do you have a stop sign? I don't have a stop. Do you see a stop sign? I don't see a stop sign. I'm going. I'm going for it. I'm just gonna send it. There we go. Okay, now we gotta go all the way down here a long ways. Continue on this road for 21 kilometers. 21 kilometers. And then we turn right or north on, uh, or is that north? No, I'm going north now. I don't know, we turn right on Highway 56 by the looks of it by Hamilton. Is this thing taking me across the ferry? What? No, no, no. Karen, why are you telling me to take a ferry? I can see it on the map here. She's guiding me towards a ferry across from Hamilton. Why? What? We're gonna have to stop somewhere and check her work. I thought I checked it already. Why would you tell me to go go over a, a, what was the first time I've been in this area with oh no that's not a ferry no it's a, it's a skyway bridge James why would I want to take that that's a toll road isn't it no it's a skyway never mind okay so it's not a ferry it looked like a ferry okay Karen maybe I jumped the gun a little bit there. maybe you know what you're talking about maybe I don't know 
So it was a skyway, not a toll road. I go over this every time and I, it just looks different on this GPS than it did on the other one. I thought it was making me go across the water at first, like by boat. So I believe this is Hamilton here. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong. Is my lane ending? Oh, my lane is ending. Oh, that's what's going on here. That's why no one's in this lane. Okie dokie. All right, well, that's fun. That's why no one was in this lane. I thought these lanes all went through. This lane's gonna stop. Thank you, someone let me in here. Very nice of them, very, very nice. Whoa, okay, you're gonna slam on your brakes, okay. One thing I don't like about city driving, you know, it's too many people. You know, this is the thing that I've told you before, it's just the thing I don't like about cities in general. Too many people. Too many people, all in one place. That's our biggest problem that we face on the planet. I mean, not, not in this part of the planet, I mean, on this part of the planet, we got lots of open space. Like, we're not overpopulated here. It's the, <laughs> the other side of the world. I can't imagine how they live like that. Some of those countries that they're having, like, 1.4 billion people. That's too much. That's too much. And this is enough here. <laughs> I think. It's nice that we have these big urban centers we can go to, everyone can live together here and blah blah blah, they can live their lives and I can still go out to the middle of nowhere and live off in the middle of nowhere. But you know, not everybody can do that and I understand that. That was a solid line, my friend. You uh, crossed a little too late there. How many more people want to lane dive in front of me? That guy's going to lane dive up there. How many more people you think are going to go? Anybody else? Anybody else want a lane dive? Yeah, the hard thing about living out in the middle of nowhere is there's no jobs out there. Like we're around where I live, there's not very many jobs. Right? That's, that's why no one wants to live there. It's, it's really cold in the winter time. There's no jobs. But I'm a truck driver. My job is wherever my truck is, right? So it, it works for truck drivers. But there's a lot of people who, you know, they have to live in urban centers because that's where their job is. And, I sort of feel sorry for them, but it is what it is, right? It's, there's good things about living in a city. There's bad things. It all depends on your personal preference, I guess. And you guys know where I stand on that, because I remind you every time. Every time I'm in a big city. I grumble about being in a big city. All these people everywhere, they're all in my way. <laughs>
Here we are, Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. You have arrived at your destination, Husky East. Husky what? Husky East. Now it's apparently Esso. I'm tired. Oh, it's been a long day again. I have a long day tomorrow and then a short day on Sunday. Hopefully I can find a spot to park here. <laughs> 